Hi, I'm Gabriel Flores, also known as the Maybe Lee. Today, I am putting together this episode because I am continuing the work I've already started. And, um, and as you guys know, um, if you've catch if you've caught my other episodes um this is a talk show uh, slash uh, series slash um just special project i'm doing about um personal things i want to talk about things um, that are personal to me uh, my experiences memories stuff like that and putting it together with um, another topic that interests me, um, and that's about it. And so, um, you know, um, that's what we're I'm doing today. Um, so basically, um, the deaths that are most impactful on us are the deaths where we cried, are the deaths where we saw live proof and the deaths where we were entitled to their stuff. Um, and basically, um, what I'm talking about here is, um, sometimes, uh, when people die, um, it seems like for certain people, at least for me, it seems like it's worse. And, you know, I know death is, it's basically universal. When anybody dies, it's always going to be bad. Death isn't, isn't a good thing. It's a bad thing. And I agree with that. Um, but there is a fact, and it can seem rudimentary, but I, I also think for some reason it is fundamental in um, something that's really important. I'm just not quite sure what, but um, the very basic fact that um, when people die, um, sometimes some deaths are more impactful than others. And one large reason for that is some of the some of the people that die we know, and some of them we don't know. And that's just a, a real fact. You know, you can sit there all day and and um, say how you knew a movie star or an author or something like that but it, in my case i don't see how that compares to actually knowing the person other than your memories fade away and um, with the distance and time um, knowing that person seems to be blurred and almost like maybe you didn't know the person but for me and that's how it feels for me and Sometimes I have to remind myself, well, I did know the person and uh, they are dead now. At one point in time in, in my life, we were hanging out with each other. And that means more to me than watching somebody on the television. Um, although, you know, you can make an argument for, well, you know that person because you've read their work, you've laughed at their work, you know the type of person that so-and-so movie star is so you actually do know everybody that, that dies but then there's another layer to that um people die every single day that you don't hear about on the news that aren't famous so there's another layer to that um you know there's a distinction between people that die um the people you know movie stars and stuff like that that you see that you've you could make a claim that you know, but then there's an even further distinction for the people that die every single day that aren't famous. And all of it can be chalked up to theory <laughs> that it's all just theoretical. Um, what's real and what's not real. What is real life me? It, it all, it can all boil down to being really iffy. Um, but the way I see it is um, all deaths are the same. They're all bad. Um, and it's too bad that we don't know about all that, you know, that I can't sit there and take the time to learn about everybody that's died every single day because it's impossible. 
Uh, but, you know, I, I pray for anybody that dies and anybody that loses somebody who's close. It's all bad in, in my eyes. Um, um, but what I did is I broke down um, the people that you know and further defined uh, what it means to know somebody who's died. And that's why I talk about crying. Um, some people, you know, when I found out um, a certain movie star died, I didn't cry. But when I found out that um, my very close friend Chelsea died, I eventually cried. I didn't cry initially, but eventually down the line, I ended up crying. And when you take that extra step and you actually cry, I think it makes it more impactful. And for me, because all deaths are the same, you know, I encourage people to, um, to cry for anybody that's died. When you find out somebody's died, because you want the impact to be the same, because all deaths are bad. So by breaking it down like this, you see where the work needs to be done. You can actually see, and on the vice versa side of that, if you don't think it's bad, if you, or if you don't care about death, and you don't want to have an impact, you don't even want to remember it, then make sure you don't cry. Don't cry then, in, the, in that case. But I would make it an effort to cry for anybody that's died for for the fact that it makes it more impactful. Um, and so I cried when, when she died. You know, I, I, I can think of movie stars and stuff that have died where I didn't cry. And the way I see it, you know, more people are gonna die. So <laughs> I'm gonna have plenty of time to either make a correction or just keep it as is. Uh, because the way I see it right now, people don't make an effort for me, so I'm not going to make an effort for other people. And this is one of those areas where I can work harder and be a better person or not. And since the world is so bad, I'm going to choose to just let things naturally roll out how they roll out because of that. If the world was a better place, I would choose to to make sure and make every death the same impact for me personally. And that is the right thing to do in my eyes. Um, I've known other people, you know, just thinking about death in general has made me cry before. But I know for a fact I haven't cried when I found out about everybody that has died, when I found out about each Every time I've found out about somebody who's died, um, I know I haven't cried for everybody, but I have cried about thinking about death in general and how sad it is. You know, we don't know enough enough about death. Uh, but I think this is actually a step in the right direction, learning about death, uh, because it does show you that um, all deaths are equal. Um, because you can get to know everybody that has died. Now, of course, it's all dependent on our memory. You know, we might not remember it for very long. And so that has to put, that has to mean something in the larger scheme of things. Because even though we can learn about the personality of every person that has died in the world, um, being able to do that, to get the story out for every single person would be labor intensive, but it can be done. And the other second issue is on the individual being able to remember it for more than just a couple seconds of reading the story and stuff like that. But there is a small brief period of time where, yeah, you can know everybody that has died. Um, you can cry for everybody that has died. You can, um, you can make them equal. All deaths can be equal. So there is something about death that um, is unifying in that sense.
but going back to this, you know, thinking back, well, you know, I know people who've died. You know, I didn't cry when my friend Jeremy died from an overdose. He died from an overdose, a uh, heroin overdose. He was shooting up and he, he shot up too much heroin and died. I didn't cry when I went to his funeral, but I was really sad and I was hurt about it, but I, I didn't cry over it. And, you know, so that explains why Chelsea's death um, up until this point has been more impactful. Because I cried at her funeral. I cried about her dying. Live proof. I saw her body. I walked up to the casket during the funeral and I saw her body in there. She appeared to be a little bit heavier like uh, death had caused her to gain weight and so i actually saw proof of her being dead um, but you know i've i've saw proof of bruce lee when he was of him dead i saw proof of him being dead in video footage of him lying in his casket as well that makes it more impactful it make because it makes it more real that this person that you once admired that you love so much and still do you actually see in a state that we don't understand and you see life proof well there that person is but they're not talking back to me they're not performing their martial arts skills in front of me right now life around them is continuing on as normal as possible we're trying to make things as normal as possible while they lay there in the casket like nothing's happening without any regard for morals or social norms or a manner of acting it seems like all of that's just slipped away from them and you see live proof of that that's why it make that makes that more impactful when you see somebody when you get live proof of their death And lastly, it's more impactful um, uh, when we're entitled to their stuff. You know, when they have letters and stuff that you have to go pick up. Um, and, or you have, you know, they left you a car or something like that. When Chelsea died, her mom um said I was entitled to some of her writings and stuff like that and I went and picked them up and you know I'm responsible for this thing it makes it more impactful at that point because that item becomes really valuable uh, and it makes it special that you, know, you now own this item from somebody who's passed away it makes you feel honor you feel honored and you know, at the same time, really sad. Uh, and so, in those cases, that's how death becomes more impactful. We have to work on making all deaths equal. So, that it, because it's always bad when anybody dies. Pimp C died a few years back. One of the rap artists that I really admired and really admired his his rap abilities one of the better rappers in my eyes when he died um according to brandon scott of the boomont enterprise.com website according to him he wrote on uh, november 1st of 2016 that pimp sees a state uh, Port Arthur estate was worth $309,000 and his Chanera, Chanera, his, his wife was appointed as the administrator of his estate. So she was responsible for everything he, he had accrued over his lifetime in wrapping um, which included millions of dollars, all of his, 
over millions of dollars he accrued from rapping um, as a member of the group uh, UGK. All of his personal items, things he received throughout the years from other people that he kept, all of his belongings were now a part of under her purview because she was the administrator of his estate. So his death was really impactful for her because she was now um, had a, was entitled to all of his stuff. Not only was she entitled to all of his stuff, but she was responsible for um, all of his um, bills and figuring out how everything was going to be paid out. Um, and so, you know, he was worth millions and millions of dollars. So, you know, she was definitely feeling the impact of his death uh, because, because of that uh, made his death that much more impactful and stressful for her and still is because she still is the administrator of his estate. And, you know, it's just sad when people die, um, but it's important to think about death in this manner because some of us continue moving forward and uh, some people die um, in our lives. And so we have to learn to cope with it, learn to learn about it, become knowledgeable about it in the best way that we know how. And this is how I know how. I hope you guys have learned something um, about death and what death means to me. Until next time, guys, see you later.